Hey everyone, so this is just a quick message that I've recorded after already completing this video. So this is going to be the final video in this series, this is going to complete the project, everything will be ready to go by the end of this. During the process of making these videos I have had some interest in the C++ version of this project, so I just wanted to let people know that that is something that I will be working on. I already have started making progress on this, I'm still just trying to work out what's going to be the best way to approach this, whether to do everything from scratch, or I think what might be more interesting is seeing how we can merge the blueprints into the C++ files and uh, use the blueprints in C++ interchangeably and really get the best out of uh, using the engine has meant to be used. And I just want to make sure at the same time that we're not going to run into a lot of debugging errors and compilation issues and things like that. So I want to make sure that this is going to be quite uh, robust before making everything. So the C++ section of this playlist will be coming over the next few weeks. So I just wanted to say that if that is something that you're interested in seeing, then do keep an eye out. And of course, if you wanted to be kept up to date with all of this, then do subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified as soon as I start releasing the C++ version of this playlist as well. Okay, so that was, so as I said, just a quick message and I'll let you get back to adding the finishing touches to this project. So this will be the video where we complete the, the game loop and we add everything in that we have ready now. We have all of the widgets and we have the logic ready for the level progress. So we're going to bring all of this together and we will have a fully functional game. So to begin, if we go back to our game mode, if you don't already have the game mode class open, uh, remember we have all of this from the previous video ready and there's a few things that we need to implement on top of this. Now I realized at the end of the previous video that we have this load next level function. You may have noticed this and I'm not sure if you have this at the moment. So I have a bit of a problem where the shortcut key in Unreal to add a breakpoint if you want to debug through your code is F9 to add a, add a breakpoint and I keep forgetting that Camtasia's default uh, pause and resume buttons for the hotkeys are, are also F9 and F10. So I think at some point I was recording I had gone into the creation of the logic of the next level function and hadn't realized that I'd pressed the debug key in Unreal at some point, which also conflicted with Camtasia, and had just stopped recording and was just talking to myself for about five or ten minutes. A few videos ago, I went back, cleared everything out, and restructured the way I was doing the videos, but I think I may have left an empty function in. So if you have this and it's completely empty, that's fine. If you don't have this function, then just come down here, add another function, and call this load next level because we will need this now. Before we hit this function though, what we want to do is we want to update our level complete function. Remember this was kind of a temporary placeholder function because regardless of what we were doing, we're always going to load main2 at the moment and obviously we don't want to do that. What we want to start doing is using some of the variables that we created in the previous video. We're going to drive some logic, we'll find out what the current level is and we will go into loading new levels. So to do this, the first thing is to detach the open level node that we already had. In fact, we can just delete that altogether. And we will drag off of here and we'll do a branch check. The thing that I want to check against is our next level. So I control drag in the next level. We'll find out what this is currently stored as. So we'll do an equal to. So we'll find out whether the string in here equals to that manual variable that we entered, which was end for me. Remember I said that on the event graph, if you've called this something other than end, remember how you spelt it, including the capitals, and make sure that you enter exactly the same here. So really all we're doing is we're finding out whether or not we have another level to load or whether we're currently on the end level. If we are on the end level, so if the value in here has been set to end, then we want to create our widget. So we're going to create a widget and this will be our game over screen. So we're going to go to the WBP underscore game complete. We will add this to the viewport and there's a couple of things that I want to demonstrate but uh, to kind of make a point of them I'm going to leave that until we actually approach loading this. So we'll leave this here for now. Now the other option is obviously that we are still in the game and we have other levels to load so on false so if this isn't true then we're going to open a level but this time what we want to do is we will get the next level and we'll just plug this in here. This is going to do a conversion from a string to a name because the open level takes a name value and the uh, levels the way that we've stored them are stored as strings but that's fine. So that means that if we're on say main 1 and this has been stored as main 2 then when this is called when we've completed the level we're going to load the next level. So if we do this now in fact we can actually do a quick test that this works. Again if I could complete the, the game then we will finish level 1 and this will load us straight on to level 2 and we know that because the course has changed and also because I haven't built the lighting and then when we get through level 3 we have our game over menu. Now the problem that I wanted to demonstrate here is that we don't have any control over the menu at the moment so if you are following along you'll notice that you don't have a cursor and you cannot interact with the buttons. 
So to fix that, we're going to come over here. We want to get the player controller, which can be found just here. And again, just for those of you who are not aware, this just relates back in our game mode. We can set things like the default player class, which we've actually done to be our main player. You can also set the player controller. So this is just giving us a default player controller, and this controls things like whether or not you can see the mouse. So this is going to be really useful. So if we drag off of here, we want to set the show mouse cursor option. So if we just type show mouse cursor, and we want to set whether or not the mouse cursor is visible. So we're going to come in and we'll set whether or not the mouse cursor is visible. Now this is kind of fixed everything, but there's still one other problem that I want to address. So if we hit play, and we will do this again, so we'll quickly complete the game. And I just skip level two, so we're back here. Now what I want you to notice is that I haven't pressed anything yet, and we cannot interact with the buttons. You'll notice that there's no hover effect when I go over the buttons. If I was to press the replay button, nothing happens. But now the hover effect appears, and that's because you have to click into the screen once before you actually get access to your menu system. And this is something that bugs me. You'll notice that if there is a slightly less experienced developer who may have released a project, uh, you'll see them fairly often on Steam now. And you can kind of tell if it's been made in Unreal because this is a problem you see quite a lot, is that the reviewer or the person playing it will mention that they have to click into the screen numerous times before they can interact with the menu. And that is because they've missed this step. And what you want to do, we'll address this in a moment, find out what that is. Uh, what you want to do is off of the player controller, you also want to set the input mode. So by default, we have our game input mode because you want to be able to control the player, which is the game input mode. You also have an option called game and UI, so you could have partial control of the player, so you could use like was to move around, and you'd also be able to interact with uh, menu buttons. What we want, because we are only on a menu, we just want the input mode to be set to UI only, and we're going to plug this in, and there's a couple of things we want to do now. So we want to set the widget that we focus on to be the one that we've just created. So I'm going to drag this over here. Again, I'm going to double click and uh, add a reroute node to make this a bit tidier and just move this around a bit. And we don't need to worry about locking this. So now if we do this again, again, I'll just skip to completing the game. So I've just completed the game and now I haven't pressed anything. But if I go down to the button, we'll see that we can immediately hover over the buttons. And now if I press any of the, the interactable buttons that we've created, I can replay the game as you would expect to happen. So this is just one of those things, it's a really simple step, but uh, it's one of those things that can really make your game seem unprofessional or unpolished if you if you miss it out. So if you've ever wondered as well, maybe you weren't aware if you've uh, played about widgets before and you wondered why I always have to click into that screen uh, that one extra time, just because the input mode is set to default as game input, so you have instant control over your player, and we just want to change that to be the UI. Now this, interestingly enough, is going to create another problem, but again, I want to try and approach these as we find the problems. So this will cause another issue for us, which I will show you how to fix a little bit later. So with that done, the error message didn't appear again, so I don't know what that error was, so we'll look out for that just in case something has gone wrong. Otherwise, that is our level complete and uh, level progress system implemented. What we want now is our main menu map. So if we go back to the maps folder, we're going to right click in here, we'll create a new level, and we'll just call this one main menu. So in the main menu map, we're going to save everything we've done and go into this, and you should be greeted with complete emptiness. It's a completely empty map, which is perfectly fine. Now, what we want to do here is because we don't want control over the player, we don't want to spawn our default class in, which at the moment is going to happen because we've set that to be the project's go-to class, which is our game mode that we've created, which is going to automatically spawn in our player. And because it's going to spawn the player into the abyss, the nothingness, what you'll find is you're going to fall straight out of bounds and you're going to go into the, uh, the game over state. So to override this, if we go to our blueprints tab just here, you can see that we have an override option. It's currently set not to be overridden. Now, if we navigate to the select game mode base class, we just want to change this to be anything which isn't the game mode that we've created. So I'm going to use the standard game mode class, which means that this is just going to give us that default spectator pawn, which is fine because the player won't see it. They're going to be only interacting with the UI. The main thing is that we don't spawn the cube and make the player lose without them knowing what's happening. Now, the next problem that presents is that we don't have any logic now to create a widget because we don't have access to this default game mode classes, we can't edit it the same way we edit our own. So the way that we can bypass this problem is if we go back to our blueprints tab, we can go to open level blueprint. And basically every map that we create has its own unique level blueprint, which is just a small area of a pretty standard blueprint graph. It, it misses a few things like it's not a physical entity. So it wouldn't be able to have things like colliders, we can't add things like collision checks, it doesn't exist in the world. But we do have the standard event begin play and event tick functions that we want. Uh, in fact, we can get rid of the event tick. 
But on the event begin play, this is where we're going to drive the logic to create the widget again. So we'll do the create widget and we want to add in this time our main menu widget blueprint. And in a similar vein to what we did previously, we want to add this to the viewport. I'm just gonna go back to the game mode because we actually need exactly the same things here. So we want to make sure that we can see the mouse cursor. So I'm just gonna copy all of this over. Uh, we want our access to the player controller. We want to show the mouse cursor again because by default it's not gonna do this. And we want to make sure that we focus on the main menu to avoid that kind of untidy looking uh, double click into the screen issue that I've just mentioned. So now if we press play on the main menu, this is actually going to work straight away. We have the welcome to cube runner and we can play and this will load the level because we have that logic ready. Now this is the problem that I wanted to address. And that is the first thing is you'll notice we have the mouse still on the screen. Another thing you'll notice on those games that I mentioned, which may not be ready to be on Steam, but they're there, is that you have to get rid of the mouse yourself. And that is again because the last thing that we told this to do was to show the mouse cursor and we haven't told the project to remove it again. The second problem is, is that we also told this to be UI only input. So when we come in, we have no control over the cube. So that's gonna be our problem that we want to fix now. Now a really easy way to do this is inside of the game mode, we're gonna to go to the event graph. We're gonna move our level progress system over a little bit and we want to do some logic just before this. Now because the game mode that we've created is only gonna be in the playable levels, remember, this is gonna be a really clever way to bypass the issue that we've just created for ourselves. So all we want to do is, I'm gonna paste in the last things I had because this is kind of useful. We don't want the input UI only mode though, so we're gonna delete that. But we're gonna come down here. We're gonna set the show mice cursor to be false by unticking this. We're gonna pull off of here and we will set the input mode to game only this time. So we'll set the input mode to game only and we'll plug that in there. And then once we've done that, we will continue to do the uh, level progress check that we set up previously. So it's a nice, quick, simple fix. And what this means is that the BP underscore game mode will be called every single time that we load a level, which the player has access to control, but not in our main menu. So the main menu has its own logic. We'll press play, the mouse goes away now and we have control of our cube again. And with that done, that is the entire project ready to go. But all you need to do is, as you can see here, I still haven't rebuilt the light for level two, but we have a fully playable project. We can go from the start menu to the end menu. We have all of our levels. And I just wanted to demonstrate as well is with the level progress system that I've given you, this is really simple to add in new levels. So let's just take main two. I'm gonna control W to copy this, which immediately calls it main three, which is perfect. I'm gonna come into main three's map just to add some visual difference to this. In fact, I think I'll just give it a red floor. That'll be fine and build that. All I want to show you though is how we can add this new map into our level progress system uh, without breaking anything and without very much work at all. So if we go back to the game mode with the new level ready, Remember that we're tracking all of our playable levels inside of this array that we've created. So we're gonna add a new element to the array and just call this main three to mirror the new map that I've just created. We'll hit compile. And now if we hit play from the correct map, so we're gonna go back and go into our main menu, save the select changes. So if we hit play, if we complete level one and two without doing very much extra work at all, this will now immediately load level three and then it'll be level three, which takes us to the game over level or the game over menu. And there we go. So we have a fully functional uh, level progress system and you can really quickly implement, add new levels and play about with the order of the levels and things like that just by coming in here. But I just figured it was worth showing how to quickly implement a new level in case anyone was thinking they wanted to try and add a few things to this when you weren't sure how to, to add that into this setup that we made. So yeah, that is everything ready to go. Hopefully this has proven to be a useful set of videos for you. I have already got a decent amount of interest about progressing this onto a C++ based project. So I also had a playlist which I've been working on to get some VR content out there. So I think what I'll do is I'll start going back and intermittently adding to the playlists where I can between the new VR playlist I want to make and coming back and revisiting this playlist and converting everything to C++ code. Uh, because I think this is going to be a really, really good simple project to introduce newer programmers to the C++ languages, which has had some really, really cool implementations and uh, options added to the engine over the last couple of versions as well. So it's going to be quite good to look at those. So do keep an eye out for that. And on that note, if you wanted to find out when those are coming out, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, because as I said, it wasn't something I planned from the beginning. This is kind of based on feedback and the interest that I've seen. So yeah, feel free to subscribe to be 
kept up to date when those start coming out. Um, I'll start implementing and recording those videos as soon as possible. As ever though, I do hope this has proven useful and if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That's really helpful. More than anything, I think this is going to be quite an interesting project for people. If any of you start creating your own implementation on top of this, if you've come up with some interesting level designs, made some interesting props, then do, do feel free to share that around. It's always great to see what people are making from the videos here. As I said, if you do enjoy the content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with the latest content from the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.